Welcome to the orientation videos that are associated with Unit 5 from Working with Health IT Systems. I also want to demonstrate with you how to create a user-defined view that involves the graphing function. This may be a request that a user comes to you and says, I want my font size to be a 14, or I want my default view when I open CPRS to go right to the problem sheet instead of the cover sheet. And by the way, there's a certain specific group of data that I always want to see on my patient, and I'd like it to be displayed in a graph that looks like this. Again, this is just a way that you can work within CPRS systems and many other commercially available systems to set up user-specified views. So let's go up and choose Tools again. We're going to go to Options, and I want to show you how to create this user-specified graph view. Let's go into the Graphs tab in the Options box. I want to look at View Definitions. This is the screen that's going to pop up. You'll see three different boxes here. There are Sources, Items, and Items for Graphing. This is very similar to when you did the Report function a unit or two ago, in that you need to pick where your data is coming from, select the items that are part of these sets, and then actually transfer over here the items that you would like to use for graphing. I want to show you the difference between all items and patient items because this is an important feature here. Let's look at something like lab tests, okay? In the items box comes up every single lab test that could possibly be ordered in the CPRS system. When you are dealing with an individual patient, and I'm working with patient 1 here. If I choose patient items, what this will do is it will only display items in here that Mr. 1 has values associated with, which is really smart. So I know that Mr. 1 patient, somewhere in his record, has a creatinine value. He has hemoglobin A1Cs. He's got calcium chloride, cholesterol, whatever. If I'm working with a user who says, I want to see these four things with every one of my patients, and I want it laid out in a graph. This is how you can set up a user-specified view. You need to explore and play with this, but let me show you an example. Let's just say I'm working with a clinician who wants to come in and for every patient on the floor, he wants to see these particular values. He wants to look at their cholesterol levels. He wants to look at their HDL levels. He also wants to see the LDL cholesterol, the low-density lipid proteins. So we have the good and the bad cholesterol levels. And let's also just say we want to look at triglycerides. So. What I've done for my particular user, let's say, for example, it's Dr. Smith. And Dr. Smith wants to always have these items appear for every one of his patients. So what I can do then at this point is to click on Save Personal, and I'm going to name this view Dr. Smith's Lipid Panel. And I'm going to save this, okay? Now, what I want to demonstrate here is that now that I've set this up, just pretend you've sat and you've worked with your user, you've named it for them. And you save it, and you say OK, and you go back out to the cover sheet view. What I can do now is go into the Reports tab, or probably better. I can even go up here to Tools again and choose Graphing. And what will pull up will be another dialog box. Let's expand that so it's a little bigger. Now, you can see that here are, again, all the items similar to what we did in a prior experience. These are all the items that could be chosen to graph. I'm going to look at views, though, because I've set up a specific view for Dr. Smith. So, here is Dr. Smith's lipid panel. So, if we click this, you'll see down here, what it's showing is this is the content in Dr. Smith's lipid panel and it automatically graphs these out in four separate graphs. And this is so Dr. Smith can come in every single time, go right straight into Tools, 
and choose his lipid panel on every single patient that he comes in and does that upon. If they have data existing, that data will actually show up. You will also know that by clicking and unclicking individual graphs here, you can put these all into one graph, which can then illustrate the relationship of one of these levels to another. The graphing feature has many different options for how it displays. Let me just show you. Do a right click right in the body of this graph, and we'll get many different ways of displaying this. So I can switch this to 3D, which makes it pretty hideous. So I'm going to switch it back from that. But you can also show the values. Let's just say we want to split numerics in events. And then maybe you could choose something that you wanted to plot all these values against. Just say weight or something of that nature. And you might want to put that here in the bottom. And see, then what it does is actually splits the two. You can have graphs at the top and a graph at the bottom. If you want to undo that split view, you can simply check the button here. I also want to show you that you can do some things like you can actually change the settings. Let's just say we want to make this gradient. And you can see what happens there is it actually changes the background to a gradient blue. There are other things that you can do. You can change that back to a clear background and say OK, and it comes back to this background as well. I'd like you to just come in here and to explore a bit, so you can see if you hover over, you can actually get the data value, which we did in a prior unit. There are many different functions that you can work with right here in the dialog box. So, select and define is actually where you could go back and create another view. Or, if you would like to change the view that exists right now. Dr. Smith's lipid panel. So now we can add something else. Once you've arrived at this sort of display, I think what you need to do for your assignment is to look at it both as individually graphed items and graphed in a consolidated fashion, such as you've seen here. 